Yo, what up, Card Kingdom family? Kenji back for some more drafting here on Magic Online. Got some more of this vintage cube ahead of us. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all of your Magic card-related needs. We've got some more vintage Cuberino. This is a slightly different version. They've swapped out a bunch of cards for some new cards. Um, for example, I think they took out Show and Tell and added Dream Halls in its place. Pretty cool one. And they've made a bunch of other swaps in the cube as well. So it will be your basic vintage cube you're always accustomed to with some new additions. Anyway, I think out of this pack, I'm just going to first pick Ragavan and maybe Force Like Mono Red. I am feeling like a nice little beatdown deck, and a first pick Ragavan is perfect for that type of thing. Now, if I get past something crazy, who knows, but eh, I like first picking the Ragavan. Let's force some red nonsense, huh? How about that? <laughs> well, not a great red pack, I will tell you right now. There's a Blood Feather Phoenix and nothing else. What does this one do again? It's from the new set. Whenever an instant sorcery you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay a red if you do return it from your grave to the battlefield. Oh, okay, so it's just good. Recurrable two drop flyer if we wanted to force the red. What are the best cards in this pack, though? Probably like Bribery, Misty Rainforest. Honestly, Ponder's always great. Him to Turok's great. Mm. Wandering Emperor's insane. Nope, like I said, though, I'm feeling in a beatdown mode. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like con control more than I like aggro in the cube, but sometimes you just want to beat down, and I think I think that's what we're going to try forcing here. Well, these are the worst packs I've ever seen in my life for the mono red aggro deck. Um, oh, I do believe they have added a bunch of, like, sacrifice theme stuff, too, to the cube. So new additions for, like, a sacrifice theme. Maybe we could try the new deck uh, that's available in the format. There's a Vampiric Tutor here, a Bloodgast here. I mean, the only red card is Imperial Recruiter anyways. So it's not like that's an important pickup. I'm kind of down for that. Now, if there was a good, like, if there was like Lightning Bolt here, sure, I would take it. But maybe, maybe we uh, hedge ourselves in a slightly different deck and take the Mayhem Devil. Wow, that is that is a scary tinker. I am I am regretting forcing this red deck, but I'm just gonna take the Bloodstained Mire here. I'm gonna stick to my guns because hopefully this will pay off uh, in packs two and three. Jessica's will. What is this one? Choose one. If you control a commander, you can choose both. Add a red for each card in target opponent's hand, or exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So, obviously, a commander card. There's a Badlands here, there's a Dark Confidant here. I mean, these are some pretty big blue signals getting the Urza and the Jace. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with just taking the Dark Confidant though, and again, leaning towards this direction. Okay, there's a Dothy Voidwalker, that one's very good. Valky, God of Lies is great. <laughs> there goes an Upheaval. Kind of like taking the Valky over the Dothy Voidwalker, but both are fantastic. A card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead, and then sack it, choose an exiled card an opponent controls. You may cast it without paying its mana cost this turn. Pretty darn good. Hmm. Okay, I think Voidwalker's probably a little bit too strong. Oh, there's a Bitter Blossom here, and a Braids. So a little bit of the sack theme there. But I think the Bitter Blossom might be a little bit better than the Braids. Murderous Rider, Makeshift Mannequin. Okay, well. It wasn't the... Oh, yeah, nice Blood Artist. It wasn't the Mono Red deck I had my mind set on, but it's a good start to a Sacrifice deck for sure. In fact, the Meadook Massacre coming back around is insane too. Though I'd like to take the him. Hmm. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Maybe him to Tarok is still a better choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with the hand disruption, especially since we took the Voidwalker anyways. Our number one wheel would be the Badlands, but 
No, this is looking nice. I can get behind this start. Bloodgast, also a really nice wheel here, obviously. How many sacrifice effects do we actually have? Zero? Or, like, repeatable sacrifice effects? We don't actually have anything. <laughs> Uh, Putrid Imp. That's for the reanimator deck, not so much Sacrifice. Actually, I'm not even sure if there are any good repeatable Sacrifice effects in the format. I mean, there probably are. Like, Recurring Nightmare is fine, but that's not really meant for this deck. Um, do they have, like, Goblin Bombardment? There might be Goblin Bombardment in the Vintage Cube, although I don't know if I've seen that in quite some time. I'm guessing the Badlands is not going to come back at this point. But what can you do? I think Loyal Retainers might be another new include. Oh, and last pick, Braids. Okay. Wait, that was exactly the repeatable type of sacrifice effect we were looking for. Though you can only do this one once a turn. Nice pack one there for us, though. Hey, okay, Duretti's another sacrifice effect. You may sacrifice an artifact if you do destroy an artifact or creature, and this makes one ones. There's a Midnight Reaper here, Burst Lightning, Hex Mage. No, 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 this is going really well. I like this start. What does the next pack have for us? Oh, man, look at these juicers. Time Twister, Channel, Mana Drain, yikes. For us, we have like a Dark Dweller, Oracle, or a Fatal Push. Sack a creature, exile the top card of your library, and you play that card this turn. Yeah, let's just take that. Or I guess I could probably take Fatal Push and wheel the Dark Dweller. Yeah, that's probably right. Either way, I don't think you can go wrong. Demonic Tutor. Even in a deck like this, Demonic Tutor is still going to be good. I might be not, you know, I might not, might not be doing like combo busted things. But, I mean, you can't go wrong with two mana. Look for anything. Okay, you know what we just found? The Goblin Bombardment I was talking about. Ooh, but, you, oh gosh, I think I get greedy here. Like, how do I pass Bone Crusher Giant? I don't think I do. I think the game plan is to take the Giant and wield the Bombardment. Animate Dead, Chupacabra, also fine. Let's do that. Braids? Hell yeah. Reanimate. Oh god, Jace. Hierarch. Oh, no, no, wait. You know what? I take that back. I'm supposed to take Rabble Master here and then try to wheel the braids. That also makes a lot more sense. Entomb, Phoenix, Bone Shards. I'm guessing I need to take the Bone Shards for good removal. There was... We just basically passed an entire reanimate deck this pack. We saw Reanimate, Animate Dead, Entomb, a bunch of fatties. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm really going to regret passing that Badlands. Because I don't think we've seen any other good red-black lands at this point. Okay, next pack. Oh, Arena Rector, huh? That's a nice one. City of Traders. I think that might be a new include. What do you have here? Grim Lava Mancer and Infernal Grasp. What's my removal right now? Murderous Rider, Duretti, Push Bone Shards. Yeah, we can probably go with Infernal Grasp over the Grim Lava Mancer. Okay, I need to take Sulphurous Springs here. I'm. It would be so, so greedy to take one of these other cards, Bomat Courier, Downfall, or Incinerate. All three would be really good, but I... I need that for sure. Just way too important. And we're going to get enough playables, so the fixing is is the key here. Alright, alright. Midnight Reaper versus Eidolon. Let's go with the card advantage engine with our creatures. Although this does specify non-token, so it doesn't work well with Bitter Blossom, or as well with Bitter Blossom or Rabble Master as some of our other cards. Ah, Ancient Tomb is insane, but I don't think it makes this deck. We just have too many double black cards. 
Yeah. Sad, but it's going to be the case. We'll take the Dark Dweller. This is crazy. This is only pack two. So we're basically going to build an entire deck in two packs. There's the Bombardment on the wheel. Yes, yes, please. And that's just super good with a ton of our creatures. There's Braids. <laughs> so best possible opens for us are going to be like uh, Mox Jet or Mox Ruby. Soul Ring, unfortunately, would not actually be that good here. Black Lotus would obviously be nuts as well. Yeah, see, this sucks. Like, Mana Vault is one of the top 10 or 20 cards in cube, and we just don't have a way to utilize it here. So, for us, we take, like, Smuggler's Copter or Ferocidon. I could take Zeatoras. That would be good, too. We don't want to run a tap land necessarily, but getting another red-black fixer would be very important. Um, I think this is Copter, though. I mean, what's our deck looking like right now? I don't think we'd run Duretti. We don't have much burn, so Phoenix is bad. We'd probably cut a little bit of removal since we have quite a bit. Let's see, all those are worthwhile. Yeah, I think the Copter's the choice here. Getting a... Oh, there's a Phyrexian Tower. It's a new include, I think. Sack a creature, add two. Char could be a good pick. Bobble's not bad as a free roll. Red Elemental Blast for sideboards, not crazy. I guess Char for some direct burn doesn't seem bad. Let's do that. Knight's Whisper, Arid Mesa, Glory Bringer. I don't think we'd be playing Glory Bringer. We already passed the Badlands, so I don't think Mesa is gonna make the cut, unless I got Blood Crypt. Mm. Mesa is specifically good for only just Mayhem Devil triggers. Yeah, I probably just want the Knight's Whisper, though I'm not sure I'm going to end up playing it. Ooh, Kolagon's Command is really, really nice. Recurring Nightmare is fantastic, but I don't think it really makes sense in our deck. We don't have a lot of Enter the Battlefield value, so we're like swapping out a small creature for another small creature. It is nice with Bloodgast and the tokens, but I think we just go with Kolagon's there. Fury, Dreadbore, Imperial Seal... Thirst, top, all viable. Mm, Dreadbore is just good removal. I don't think we'd want Imperial Seal. I don't. I mean, Fury would be another good sideboard card, probably. Thirst would also just be good. I guess Dreadbore is probably a little bit safer. Hey, there's the Blood Crypt, and yes, that is one of the most important cards we could have gotten. So, Carry Zev, great. Fiomancer, great. Blood Crypt, way too good. Oh, looks like they added a Graveyard Trespasser. I'm going to take that for sideboard over main deck, I think. Although, maybe I just cut, like, the Char and the Dark Dweller. Pyromancer doesn't seem awesome, but it does have a couple of instants and sorceries to get value from. Robber of the Rich and a Light Up the Stage. i got to imagine Robber of the Rich and Light Up the Stage are both pretty good here. This seems like we're going to be running 16 lands, right? Maybe Phoenix is a top-end card we don't need. Yeah, I'm okay with Robber. All right, Fro Frostadon Wield, Avalanche Rider, and Factory. Frostadon's another pretty nice one. I think I'm going to take Frostadon for sideboard. Ah, same thing with Red Elemental Blast. Great sideboard cards. 
Dude, the reanimate deck would have been insane. It was just so open. A <laughs> recurring nightmare now, too. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. This is still a super cool deck. So like I said, one of the uh, changes they made to this cube is that they kind of ramped up the red-black sacrifice strategy, which seems weird because in Vintage Cube, you wouldn't think a strategy like this is all that good. But I'm going to give it a shot here. Really, I'm only missing the Badlands that I passed early on. Otherwise, I think this deck is... If this was a Legacy Cube draft, this deck would be insane. I guess for a Vintage Cube draft, maybe this deck is bad. Because if we play against some broken deck, some combo deck, I am not sure we're going to fare very well. I mean, Braids can do a lot of work. We have some discard effects. Hopefully this works out well. Okay, getting a very late carry Zev. Wait, might also make the deck. So just need like one cut here. What's it gonna be? What is our one cut? Is this too many three drops, maybe? Yeah, maybe it is just Robber of the Rich I'm supposed to cut. It seems good, though. I don't know. I guess Dra Graveyard Trespasser is just whatever. All right, let's go like that. Load up on twos. And oh, baby, I think we got ourselves a stew. A little red-black sacrifice here in the Vintage Cube Draft League. Let's go to round one and see if we can uh, smash some people. Anyway, off for round one of this Vintage Cube Draft with our Forced Red-Black Sacrifice. 16 lands, and we have ourselves <laughs> a six-land opener. That is going to be a mulligan. That is much better. All right. Yo. Let's see here. Um... We were drafting with them as well. What are we pitching here? Maybe just the Mayhem Devil from this hand seems okay. I think we'll keep the Tutor, the Push, and the two Two Drops. I'm not actually sure what we want to Tutor for, though. And my best guess is that we're probably going to lead on both our creatures first. Oftentimes... Unless there's a very obvious card to tutor for, you want to wait on it, and I think that's our plan. Wow, they are main phasing vampiric tutor. Oh god. If my opponent is on the uh, reanimator deck, because they said they were in our pod, this might be very bad for us. Now, there is a little bit of saving grace for us, as I am going to play out Dothy Voidwalker turn two. So if they try to like entomb something, or discard a fatty... It will get exiled instead. But we passed a very good reanimate deck. Wait, mirror match? They concede it. They must have been on reanimator or something. What? Okay, that's insane. We bring in our trespasser. Uh, fatal push generally not great versus reanimator. They must be on Reanimator, right? Trespasser in. Thirst is okay. Grasp comes in. That was a weird, weird concede, though. Um, Doretti can deal with fat threats. I mean, so can Thirst, but... Now we have, let's see, Grasp, Dreadbore, Shards. Then we have some Sacrifice effects. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, we have Murder's Rider as well. I guess maybe we don't need the Kolagons command so much. They have to be on Reanimator though. What is this hand? Come on. Looking down to six, and okay. I mean, there's turn two. Dothy Voidwalker again, so. I would guess they have some number of removal spells, but this might really hose a lot of their game plan. Like, turn two Dothy Voidwalker, turn three him to Turok. Ah, uh, okay, so we didn't see the blue source game one. Although, I'd... well, now I have to do that instead. If the Ragavan connects next turn, we do get to cast the Dothy Voidwalker still. Talisman. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ate a mountain. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Void Walker here instead of him, because if I him and make them discard one of their fatties and then they talisman for a reanimate effect, it's just so bad. So. Ragavan into Dothy Void Walker turn two looks good. They are gonna tutor. Okay. So we're gonna get that Wish Claw Talisman. GG's, oh no! Yeah, they said they can't beat Dothy. They have to be on Reanimator. Storm then? I guess they could be Storm. Oh no, they are reanimator. Yep. Okay, well, sometimes that's the way it goes. A couple of clutch interactive cards that completely hose the opponent. So, we'll take it. Round one is a victory. All right, on to round two of this vintage cube with our red black sack. Uh, don't think we can keep that hand on the draw. It's pretty bad and pretty slow. This one looks a little bit more reasonable. We'll pitch the bone shards here and keep the lands uh, plus these three spells. Oh, that's going to be an easy fatal push turn one. Get rid of that bird. And then if we draw a swamp next turn, we get to hold the bloodstained mire for mayhem devil, which will be nice. Thraben Inspector. Bant value creatures. Ooh, a copter. Hmm. Okay, let's lead on Smuggler's Copter this turn then instead. And again, if we can find an untapped land, or I guess just any land next turn, we can devil without using the mire, and then the mire we can save for one point of damage. Ah, Knight of Autumn probably shoots my copter. That's unfortunate. This looks like it's not going to be a broken matchup, though. As in, our opponent's looking more like a fair deck as well. Drawing Goblin Guide. Uh... Hmm. I guess let's just get the Void Walker online then. And doesn't look like I need to grab another. Red source, so that's okay. Time of need. Search your library for a legendary creature, put in your hand. Interesting. Oh, I guess I should have played Void Walker before I attacking with the Goblin Guide. Whoopsies. Because now the Knight of Autumn, if they trade, doesn't get exiled, so. 
Small mistake on my part there. All right, they just sack the clue. I have shadow, so they should attack for one. Oh, they didn't. All right, let's go ahead and attack for three. And then let's go devil this turn. And braids next turn. Uro, wait, you have to sacrifice that, right? Yeah, sacrifice. So I will get to ping something. Oh, Uro gets exiled from Mayhem Devil. Oh no, they done goofed. Uro's gone forever. That's funny. So let's smack in for six. Now we're going to play Braids, Land, Sack Mountain. So if they sack a land, they don't lose anything, but I get to ping them for an extra one. If they don't sack a land, I get to draw a card and they lose two life. This is working out rather nicely. And now Bloodgast has haste, right? Yeah. Ten or less life. Okay, I mean, hey, we'll take it. So, Bant. Elemental Blast is probably fine. Looks like Thirst and Grass probably could come in over Bone Shards. Um, I think I like all those. Maybe Braids versus their deck, because they can get a lot of permanents on the battlefield quickly, so Braids might not be at its best. Uh, Ferocidon against Uro could be okay. Replace one of my other three drops, maybe. Maybe the Midnight, oh, maybe the Kolagon's Command doesn't need to be here. Yeah, let's go something like that. I guess I could bring in Trespasser 2 for Uro. That's not bad. Yeah, maybe cutting the Reaper is fine after all. Okay, game two. How is this hand? It's fine. I do have Bone Crusher Giant Stomp available on turn two. If I want to do that instead of, say, Void Walker. And I mean, with one land, we have a pretty nice creature curve out. Ah, dang it, they have the turn one bird again. Well, unfortunately, I do not get to shoot the bird this time on turn one. Shock again into turn two Uro. All right, let's just go ahead and get our Blood Crypt. Oh, did they not have a land with Uro? Oh, they missed a land drop too. All right, so we're definitely just going to stomp the bird. Get that thing off the battlefield. Nice. They did hit this time. We're going to get the Rabble Master down since we have uh, Bombardment in hand to go with the Blood Artist. Oh, they didn't even block the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> Skyclave Apparition. Well, that's rather rude. 
eats my rabble master. Um, I mean, they only have a couple cards in their hand. I think I'm just going to get the Void Walker online right now, even though it's less mana efficient. Getting the Void Walker online ASAP seems like the best play to me. Okay, Canopy. Into Elishnorn! Uh-oh. So we just need to Dreadbore that. And then we can actually cast Elishnorn ourselves if we want to. Uh... Entering the battlefield. We don't have any ETBs. Oh, wait, the Rampaging Frost on ETB is kind of cute. Mm. Okay, let's tell Norn. That seems fun. This is only awkward if they have a bounce effect or something, though. But I have to imagine Elish Norn turns off a lot of their stuff. Utopia Sprawl. That's fine. Although they do have access to double blue now, so maybe that could become relevant. Eladomri's Call. Okay. They get to tutor for a creature. Flicker Wisp. No, that doesn't work. That Elishnorn turns that off. It's just a 3-1 flyer. Whoopsies. Nice try. And they realize the error of their ways. So let's attack for four. Okay. And then I think I'm going to start braidsing here. So let's go braids, goblin guide, sack our goblin token, drain them for one. They'll probably sack their wall of omens, which will give us another drain. If they don't, then they lose two life and I draw a card. So either way seems pretty good to me. Sack their canopy draw. They have five other cards in their graveyard towards Uro. So not quite there, but almost. Though Uro doesn't trigger on ETB. And they're off it. All right, we are now 2-0 and with a nice little red-black sacrifice deck here. Let's go to round three. On to the third and final round of this vintage cube draft with our red-black sacrifice deck. On the play with a pretty nice looking hand, we draw our Dothy Voidwalker pretty consistently. And we have the nice combo of Dothy Voidwalker into double random discard. So there is a chance if we make them discard um, some crazy strong creature that we can steal it and cast it on turn three. Could be a good thing. 
Lotus Bloom turn one. Hold up now. Are we playing against a possible Storm deck? If so, the him might not hit any creatures, but it could hit a bunch of relevant cards otherwise. I guess we'll find out. Go for the him. They have a miscalculation for it. Okay. So we can eventually hold up miscalculation um, if we want to. Maybe we do it on the turn that Lotus Bloom is about to come down. So not this turn, but next turn. Hopefully they play like a Jace here or something that I can Fatal Push. Signet, sure. They did miss a land drop, notably. Um, what's in our deck? I have two mana that I can go with. Hmm. Nothing great for two mana here. I guess I could just grab Ragavan and uh, Blitz or whatever, Dash. That seems fine. I'm going to hold up their Miscalc because the Lotus Bloom's coming off of Exile, so I think this is good. We hit a Boros Signet. All right, gone forever, that is. Six cards in their hand, still kind of terrifying. Winter Orb. Okay. Well. I guess I'm going to go for Miscalc on that because they didn't play a land. So if they want Winter Orb to resolve, they're going to have to sack their Lotus Bloom. Seems fine to me. Okay. Oh, are they going to do it? Oh, wow. I mean, that's a little bit crazy, but they, they must have a way to deal with Ragavan already. Emery. Aha. Good news is, Fatal Push is turned online. Mox Pearl Golos. Wow, that would have been really bad for us. I don't think I'm going to dash here. I think we just hard cast and say go. Because they are only going to have access to three, maybe four mana next turn. Power Stone. Okay. We do have a Kolagon's Command somewhere in our deck. Let's attack with the Ragavan. Get an extra treasure. 
we hit a land of theirs and just say go. Hmm. I mean, the Ragavan might still just solo them. They're still missing lands. Let's go Goblin Guide. Attack for four. They did hit a Blood Crypt, but if they want to play that untapped, they're going to have to pay two life, so that's not the end of the world. And we hit another land with Ragavan, unfortunate. I think I like playing out the Blood Artist here. Just in case they do somehow kill my creatures, it'll add a little bit of poke damage. I mean, presumably if they Blood Crypt untapped, they're going to do something relevant. Okay, seven life. Here we go, what is it? Six mana. Walking Ballista for three. Ugh. Well, they don't get to kill all my creatures. But that's obviously pretty bad. Hmm. Gross. All right, so we're going to target the artist first, yeah. And now they're going to shoot the Ragavan, yep. And they are going to say go, all right. Oh, come on, deck. Just need a little bit more oomph. Dynamo off the top, too. Okay, they are going to chump and shoot me for one, it looks like. Oh, uh, this is slipping out of us. Nope, they decided to take it. Okay, that's fine. Man, way too many lands drawn here. Are they going to play the dynamo out, maybe? Doretti, oh no. So they can sack to kill our goblin guide. Sure. Oh, and they sacked the winter orb, okay. Well, bad news is I've got very little action left, so. Feels like this is probably unwinnable unless I draw something hot off the top. <laughs> Come on. The worst part about this is we hit so many lands off their deck with Ragavan too. Yeah, that'll probably do it. Drew just as many lands as spells here. So they have... Thran Dynamo and four unknowns, all of which are uh, spells. Scarab God, sure. Okay, top deck. Oh, that's a good start. Uh, 
I I want so they could have played Thran Dynamo first and then played Scarab God. Maybe they just didn't count their mana correctly. I mean, that's kind of like drawing a time walk, right? Because the, if they want to play Scarab God again, they're going to have to recast it. That gives us a chance to draw, like, Kolagon's Command. Would it be a... Oh, God. We're Mishra's Workshop now. So now for sure we'll probably see the Dynamo. Yep. Three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have enough to play Scarab God and activate the ability, I believe. And yeah, I think that probably does her. They need to use it main phase though, at the very least. This looks like a really winnable matchup though. There were so many turns where we just need to draw like one more piece of action and we would have been able to push through. All right, they're gonna grab their Golos. Grab Urza's Saga, nice. Ah, come on. All right, and that'll be game. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Way too many lands drawn there, sheesh. Trespasser can come in if we want to. Red Elemental Blast looks good. Duretti blows up artifacts. Think something like that. We don't need the Blood Artist. Don't need Carry. Actually, how good was Red Elemental Blast versus them? Yeah, I guess it was good. Scare of God, Emery, there were a few hits. Bring in Duretti over Midnight Reaper, maybe. Alright, game number two of the third and final round. It's not a great hand, but I'm going to keep it. I don't think you mulligan it, right? Turn two, Robber of the Rich. Turn three, Duretti should be solid enough. But because the opponent's playing the um, somewhat artifact deck, it's possible that the Robber of the wit, uh, Rich will not be able to exile too many cards. But they will also be on the draw, so they'll have an extra card unless they mulligan. Ah, which they did. No sad Ragavan turn one. Man... And they even played out... Oh, so if they played out the Pearl, they might have their... Uh, what was it? Miscalculation that we saw in game one. If I draw any more land, we're going to have a bad day. Yep, absolutely. Well, simply don't draw any more land, please. Okay, there's a Saga. That's good. Let's get the Duretti online, start upticking. Sadly, this is an enchantment land, not an artifact land. It would be a little bit too broken if it was an artifact land, but I say that because we can't sacrifice an artifact to kill it. We, mil we might just blow up their Mox Pearl here, though. I don't see that as being a bad play. Actually, you know what? If I blow up their Mox Pearl... They're going to activate Saga in response. And then I can Dreadbore the token away. That seems fine. Good. 
Because if they want to just make a token here on their turn, that eats up basically all of their mana. So do they want to float one, or do they want to make a token? And it looks like the answer is float. They have a mana crypt too, jeez. Okay, well, turns out using that uh, dread boar might not actually have been a good play after all. They have some very broken cards and that is a problem for our deck. What, they have mox pearl or mox ruby too? What is going on? How is that even fair? I have to sacrifice my copter here, unfortunately, and they've already drawn two cards off of it. Okay, well, this is the kind of deck we were fearing. Mana Crypt, Mox Ruby, Mox Pearl. My lord. We have good interaction for them, we just didn't draw the ones we needed. I didn't cut my Kolagon's command, did I? No, I left it in. Yeah, there's their Doretti. They can sacrifice their ruby. I get to ping for one if they sacrifice, though. Okay. Well, it's not the worst. Depending on what their follow-up play here is, of course. Into walking ballista. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Well, I think we can pretty safely call this one over. I'm not sure what I can draw. I guess that's not terrible. At least the good news with this is that they have to discard a card if they want to uh, kill it with the ready. Let's see, I didn't take the, all right, I'm not playing Knight's Whisper. We're gonna need to draw something good. Ragavan doesn't do it. Bob just dies. Demonic Tutor into like Kolagon's Command would be a start. Or just drawing Kolagon's Command naturally, I guess. All right, they're gonna make a token. Yeah, their deck's really good. I mean, obviously sometimes in Vintage Cube, you just get all of the goodies, right? Rabble Master, that isn't gonna cut it either. Um, so they have Emery with Walking Ballista now, too. Like, I guess I'm just going to eat their artifacts out of their graveyard while I can, but this is pretty bad for us. All 
I could have played the Rabble Master and attacked for one extra damage, but I don't see a point in that, right? They can just block with the Emery. Jeez. Yeah, their deck looks nice. They had a very good draft. All right, Mana Crypt's back. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana if they want to make a token with the ready. Rival Master down. Discard Damnation. Sack one of their artifacts. Kill our graveyard uh, trespasser. And Colagon's Command or Scoop, basically. That ain't gonna cut it. Alright, GG's. Yeah, their, their draft was great. Obviously, they got multiple pieces of power and we really didn't have the power level, but we did have some good first couple matches for us. So this is one of those quote-unquote fair decks. Uh, what you really need is a lot of good interaction, interruption for your opponent. We had like the Hymn to Turok. We had some uh, destroy effects. We probably needed some more hand disruption to really um, combat decks like that. But I guess... I guess they didn't do anything over the top busted. They just had a lot of individually power. Like, they had multiple pieces of power. They had the uh, mana of a crypt. So, good beats. Good stuff. That was a fun little deck. Thanks for watching, as always. And I'll see you back next week here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel for more. Bye-bye.